How's it going YouTube? Here we are again. It's time for another video. This one I'm gonna call Blessed Beyond All Measure. And you know, these videos are a lot about how God is working in my life or speaking to me or, you know, teaching me stuff, right? And sometimes that's through verses. Sometimes that's through things that happen in my life. And in this case, right, one of my favorite songs right now is Counting Every Blessing by Wren Collective, right? And if you haven't guessed it, Blessed Beyond All Measure is a lyric to that song. So if you listen to this song for the first time, you might look and say, well, it's talking about how if you're saved, you know, you're blessed beyond all measure. You have everything you ever wanted and everything's going great for you. But that's not really what the song's saying. It sounds like it, but that's not the lyrics of the song. And that's one of the reasons why it's, you know, one of my favorite songs right now, because it's so true, right? And I have a question for you. I want you to think about it in your own mind, right? What does it look like in your life to be blessed beyond all measure? Do you have everything you ever wanted, your house, your career, your car, everything's just going right? Or is it maybe you work at McDonald's and you just make enough money to pay your rent and put food on the table um, in, in, in that time? Or maybe, you know, someone's uh, giving you a hard time about being a Christian. Or, you know, maybe your family member won't talk to you because you are a Christian. What does it look like in your life to be blessed beyond all measure? Um, you know, we're going to read something here in a second about what Jesus talking to the apostles about how they were going to be blessed beyond all measure. But before we do that, I looked up the definition of blessed or blessing and it says this, happy, prosperous, and worldly affairs, enjoying spiritual happiness and favor of God, enjoying heavenly felicity, intense happiness. Okay. I look at that and I, I think it's two different blessed, you know, two different usage of the word blessed or blessing, right? One being happy, prosperous, and worldly affairs. And that, that's, you know, how we as humans look at being blessed, right? We have everything we ever wanted. We're prosperous in these worldly affairs. But then there's the other definition of blessed or blessing, and it's enjoying spiritual happiness and favor of God. Enjoying heavenly felicity, intense happiness. Being, uh, having intense heavenly happiness, right? The two different definitions, I think. And sometimes we get confused. We think if we're blessed, we're going to have everything we ever wanted. We're going to have what we asked for. We're going to get the things we want, right? Well, let's read Luke 18, 28 through 30, where it says, Then Peter said, See, we have all left. We have left all and followed you talking to Jesus, right? So he said, Jesus, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parent or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in the present time and in the age to come eternal life. So what is God saying? What is Jesus saying here? He's saying, you know what? If you've given everything for, uh, for me, you're going to be blessed beyond all measure, multiple times more blessings of what you've given up in this life. And then you're also going to have eternal life in the age to come, right? And we look at that and the, the apostles look at that and they say, oh, we're going to be kings. We're going to be rulers over everybody, right? This is what he's telling us. This is what he's saying, right? See, they had the first definition, the first idea of blessed. But you know what? Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't have that idea right here. Let me tell you, we, we, we read down in Luke 18, 31 through 33, and it says, um, Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And all the things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. And they're like, oh yeah, we're going to be kings. Here we go. Right? For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. They missed that part. They totally missed that part. They thought they had it, but they didn't listen to that part. They, it's like the song, they heard the things they wanted to hear. We're gonna be kings, we're gonna be all this. It's what he promises us, right? They don't hear about how he's mocked and spit upon, scourged and killed, right? Um, what are the times that you're most blessed in your life? You know, I, I think we mistake blessings for 
or we mistake um, attacks of of Satan or the enemy or whatever as blessings, right? Sometimes we we get this house, we get what we wanted, right? And we think, oh, this is a blessing, but then we have to go make that payment, right? And it's like, man, this is just stressful every month. It's so much. That ain't a blessing by God, right? If it was a blessing by God, it wouldn't be that way. Okay? Or, you know, maybe we have that job. But we get yelled at every day because we're in charge. Okay? Why ain't this going right? Why ain't that going right? Or maybe you're the owner of the company. Even worse, right? You got to worry about everybody there making a paycheck. And, you know, that business continuing on. You know, sometimes the things we look at as blessings really aren't blessings. And sometimes, you know, Satan likes to put us in this lukewarm water where we're just comfortable, right? We're, we're just comfortable. And, you know, we, we draw away from God, right? It doesn't bring us closer to God because everything's just easy. So it's easier for the, uh, Satan to attack us and, you know take and uh, use his attacks on us because we're not as close to God in that time. And that's what I'm talking about. What does it look like to be blessed by God? Because I think it looks like to be blessed by God. Sometimes you're not in the great place. You see, Jesus is talking about they're going to have manifold blessings, right? But the truth is, many of them were persecuted and tortured and killed for their faith in this land, in this, in, on this planet in that time, in their lifetime. Does that look like the blessings that you're talking about? Because God, Jesus said himself, you'll be blessed beyond all measure because of this. They were. They were closer to God. You see, the greatest blessing you can have in this world is to be closer to God. The other things, they take you further away from him. I ask you this, what is life on this, what is this extent of your life? 80 years, Maybe. If you're lucky, 100. If you're unlucky, none. What is life compared to eternity? You see, if you're going to be blessed in this life, you're going to be closer to God. Because God sees the big picture. He says, you know what? Yeah, maybe somebody made fun of you. Maybe you don't have this mansion, this car, or everything else you ever wanted. But you have me and that's all you need. You're more blessed than anyone else, right? You're blessed beyond all measure. See, in that song, it talks about being in the valley in the hard times and how many blessings come in from Jesus and from God in them times. He draws you close, or I should say, we draw him close. He's never moved. He's always been there. We just realize it, and we, we get closer to him in them times, them hard times. See, that's what Jesus was talking about to his disciples. That I'm gonna, you're gonna get tortured and everything else. You're gonna die for your faith in me, but I'm gonna draw you. It's gonna bring you closer to me. It's gonna, you're gonna really truly know me. And you're gonna have eternity. You're gonna have eternity. You're, you'll be blessed beyond all measure. So I ask you, when you consider being blessed, you know, them things, having that job and all that stuff, ain't necessarily bad. But if it keeps you from drawing closer to God, maybe it is. So I, I say, search, look at what you think is a blessing. Does it draw you closer to God or does it push you further away from him? Does it make you to where you're lukewarm and you're, you're, you're giving in to certain things, certain sins that you shouldn't be? Set your life up where you're blessed by God. Have heavenly felicity, heavenly intense happiness because you have eternity with him instead of earthly happiness. Right? That's, that's my uh, challenge to you today. Set yourself up to be blessed beyond all measure for real. Anyway, have a great week. I hope that you like this video. If you do, please... Um, Share it. Um, that way, if you know you're blessed by it, someone else can be blessed by it, right? Or you know, 
whatever it might be, comment if you have questions. Anyway, have a great week. I'll see you next week. And uh, be blessed beyond all measure this week, okay?